Good day, everyone. Today we'll be looking at uh, logistic regression, which is a form of a generalized linear model for binomial data. So in this case, this means that we have um, a variable that is only defined by zero or one. So yes or no. So this is what we call binomial data. Um, but we can model this, and for this we want to use logistic regression. But I can best explain with an example uh, from biology. So here we have tadpoles. Um, tadpoles, when they grow up, they will eventually become frogs or toads. Uh, but when they grow up, they have a lot of uh, problems because they're, they're prey for a lot of different predators. And one of the predators that tries to eat tadpoles is this little thing, which is a dragonfly larvae. So these dragonfly larvae, uh, they live in ponds as well, just like the tadpole, and they try to eat tadpoles. So what we tried to model with our experiment was what we tried to see whether um, survival of tadpoles could be related to the density of dragonfly larvae. So what we did was we put one tadpole for one hour in a pond, and in that pond we uh, put a certain amount of dragonfly larvae. So we tried to manipulate the density. And the question was whether or not density uh, of dragonfly larvae has an effect on tadpole survival. So after one hour, if the tadpole had survived, we would give it value zero, which means still alive, nothing happened. And if it was eaten, we gave it value one, which means it was eaten. So the event of being eaten occurred in this case. So zero or one after one hour. So this is what we tried to do. Um, now let's take a look at the data set. So we attach the data set and then we click on the data and we look at the frame. So what we see here, the first column is a column event. This is for every individual tadpole that we put in the experiment. Every tadpole was placed in a different pond. Um, and this is then, an event is zero means, as I said, it means the tadpole was not eaten after one hour. And here we have a bunch of ones, which means that the tadpole was eaten after one hour by uh, the dragonfly larvae. And then we manipulated density. So each pond has a specific density of dragonfly larvae, which is the number of dragonfly larvae per pond. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, per cubic meter. So that's why it can be, that's why it can be less than uh, one because we had small ponds. And then on top of that, we also measured um, density of algae because algae, they have an effect on turbidity. They usually, if you have a lot of algae, uh, turbidity will go down. So we also measured turbidity of the water. And the hypothesis was that as uh, we have more predators, we'll have less tadpole surviving, but we also hypothesized that as turbidity goes up and density of algae goes up, so increases, um, it will be more difficult for the predators to actually capture the tadpoles. So we'd, we'd expect a higher survival of tadpoles in conditions of high turbidity and a lot of algae. So this is what we have in our uh, logistic regression model. So we have three, in this case, explanatory variables, which is predator density, turbidity, and algae density. And then we also have the event, uh, which means a tadpole was eaten after one hour, which is a one, or it was not eaten, which is a zero. And this is what we want to model in logistic regression. So first of all, if you want to have an idea of what it may look like, we can plot the event of death, zero or one, against uh, predator density. This is just explanatory, because this is just we exploratory. This is, we just want to see what's going on. So if you look on the x-axis, we see that as predator density increases, it seems as if um, tadpoles are more likely to be eaten because you see a lot more ones here uh, at high predator density values. And if you look at the low predator density values with almost no predators, um, almost no tadpoles are eaten. So basically we all have zero. So it seems as if there's some kind of relationship between the, the number of predators or predator density in this case and whether or not the tadpole is eaten. But of course we want to be sure. We want to make a statistical model uh, and test this hypothesis. So for that, we'll be using the car package, uh, which you can install. You can uh, 
call the library. If you haven't installed it, you should run this code. And if you have installed it, you should just call the library, which we do now. After that, um, we can start building the model. And this is probably one of the more difficult parts of logistic regression because we want to eventually end up with the best model. So the model that explains most uh, without losing information. So first of all, what we should do is we should start with the full model. So in the full model, we say that our event, which is death, yes or no, we define it by one. In this case, it means death. So our event is related or is explained by predator density plus turbidity plus algae density. So this is a full model. We put all explanatory variables in the model. Then our family for logistic regression, our family is uh, binomial with the logit link. Uh, I won't explain why we do this, but if you're looking at binomial data, zeros or ones, yes or no, then this is the best way to go. You should go for the logit link. We define our data set and we build this model. So let's run this model um, by calling the summary. So we get the model down below. Now what we see is if you look at the model is that predator density has, ex has a significant effect on um, survival of the tadpoles. But if you look at turbidity, if you look at algae, uh, there doesn't seem to be a significant effect. So it seems as if turbidity and algae do not have an effect on survival of tadpoles. So maybe we should not include algae or turbidity in our model because statistically what you want to end up with is the smallest model possible. You don't want to have big models that don't explain anything. You want small, uh, concise models. And if you want to take it one step further, and this is one of the first things you should do when you're building your logistic regression model, is you should look at uh, correlation between explanatory variables. Using this code, you can just make all these scatter plots, and then you can see whether or not variables are correlated. And if you look at turbidity and algae and we look at the correlation, it seems quite solid. There's quite a strong correlation between the two. Now this makes sense because if you look at it from an ecological or biological perspective, then we know that if you have more algae, if you have a higher algae density in the water, then you also have a higher turbidity of the water. So these two are very much related. And this is something we don't want in any regression model. You don't want to put in two or more explanatory variables that may actually be explaining the same thing um, because they are so much related. And this is known as uh, VIF, which is variance inflation factor. So you can also test for this. Um, you can just call for the VIF of our model. And what you want to see is low values. And if you have high values, and we can see it down below, and high means more than 10. This is just a rule of thumb. So high values indicate that there may be some problem with correlation of explanatory variables, meaning that two variables may be explaining the same thing. So in this case, this is turbidity and algae, what we can see from the scatter plots. So the best thing to do is to just remove one of these two explanatory variables. So we either want to throw out turbidity or throw out algae. So this is a bit arbitrary, but let's just throw out turbidity. Uh, so now we go to reduced model. So I call it model A and we can run this model where we uh, threw out turbidity. And now we should no longer have a problem with the variance inflation factor. So we can just check it and it's all quite small. So it's below 10. So now we're okay. So this model is much better than the previous model um, because we had two explanatory variables explaining the same thing. So we actually want to get rid of one of those, which we did. So now model A, the second model is better than the previous model. So we want to go from here now. But still, if you look at the output of this second model, which we only have predator density and algae density, then still you see that predator density still has a significant effect on survival of tadpoles, so on the zero or the one, but algae doesn't have an effect. So this indicates that maybe we should try to build a model that is even more reduced than this model. Maybe we should just remove algae density as well, because why would we want to include a factor that does not have 
a significant effect on our y variable, so on survival of tadpoles. So let's build this third model in which we only have predator density as an explanatory factor. So we built the same model, this time only including predator density. Let's run this. Um, so now we have a very simple model in which we have a significant intercept and in which we have a significant predator density. Now, the question, of course, is which model should we choose, right? Because we've built three different models. So the first model was not okay because we have very high variance inflation factor. This is something we do not want to have. It's, it's one of the assumptions of logistic regression. So the first model is not a problem. We can omit it. We don't want this model. But then we have to choose between model A, so the second model, and model B. And a very simple way of choosing the best model is to just compare both models uh, with an ANOVA and in which we want to do a chi-squared test. So what you want to see is um, actually what you're looking at. If, if the test between these two models is non-significant, you should go for the reduced model, so the smallest model that we have. Now in this case, the chi-squared test indicates it's non-significant, so we want to go for the reduced model. In this case, this is the third model where we only have predator density as explanatory variable. So now we've picked our model. Um, another way of looking at or, or comparing models is to look at what we call the Akaiki information criterion, which is AIC. And you want this criterion to be as small as possible. So if you look at model three, the reduced model, uh, the last model that we built, we have an AIC of 35. Now we can run the second model again and then we have an AIC of 36. And if we run the first model, uh, we're looking at an AIC of 37. So also, if you look at the AIC, which you want to be as low as possible, then the third model is actually the way to go. So we should pick the third model. Um, this is it for part one of the, um, the tutorial. But of course, it doesn't end here. Because if you want to also know if if we have a good performance of the model. So, you know, we want to say something about how well it's doing um, because the fact that something is significantly affecting um, survival of tadpoles does not mean that it's a good model. So if we want to look at this, we have to take it one step further. And how to do this, I will explain this in the second tutorial uh, of the logistic regression.